And so, here we are. One year of Gran Turismo Sport. It's funny to think that the game's been out for a whole year, and of course way back around the six month mark I also did my best points, the not so good points. I believe I did earlier ones than that as well, but the majority of my thoughts as far as GT Sport goes overall have been in videos such as episodes of Beards and Cars in the past. But of course you can't go for a year with the game and not comment on the kind of journey that we've had so far, the overall thoughts of the community, of course, which you can put down in the comments. It doesn't need to be positive or negative necessarily. You could even fool both sides. I know for me personally, there are definitely things which I really like about the game, other things which I don't like at all about the game. Now, some of the things that I didn't like have been addressed way back since day one. And of course your experience with the game will vary depending on if you've been playing the game since day one or if you are a newer player. So for me, I think some of the things that I like the most about GT Sport have been, for one thing, of course, the graphics. Now the graphics aren't perfect, you wouldn't even need a new console if you could ever make the graphics perfect, of course there are always things that can be improved on, but overall I would say that GT Sport has done a great job of actually returning Gran Turismo arguably to the forefront of its rivals in terms of the kind of game that it is. It's not a pure full-on sim like something like AC Cars or Project Cars tries to be, but it's easily up there with games like that in terms of the graphics. It's not necessarily going to be the absolute best thing out there, I'm not claiming that, but for me it's more than good enough, especially for the moment. It has fantastic graphics, excellent lighting, the lighting and reflections was kind of a, a staple of what made the graphics of Gran Turismo so good right from the start of the series even. And compared to something like Forza, say Forza 6, Forza 7, Horizon 3, Horizon 4, which I also play and cover on the channel, it's easily better. I mean, I love Forza, but the graphics of Gran Turismo are undoubtedly more realistic at the moment, and it's nice to return to that place, because the graphics and the realism of the cars was always one of the biggest strengths of the Gran Turismo franchise, especially for its time. Gran Turismo 4, for instance, still looks great, given how old it is and the console that it was on. Now, as far as one thing moving over to the side that I don't like, we'll kind of jump back and forth overall, I would say that one of the main things that I still don't like, and this is an ongoing issue, is how inconsistent the news is as far as what's happening with the game, what's coming to the game. Now, of course, Polyphony has been a bit better in the last couple of months, releasing teasers, little uh, trailers for updates, stuff like that. But for a few months, in fact, for quite a number of months, we were just in the dark as far as whether or not we were getting any new content in the month. And of course, you could argue, do we need new content? Well, yes, yes, we do. Because, of course, the game has uh, one of the more notorious things and complaints, usually, that people bring up about it, which is that it doesn't feel like a full Gran Turismo experience from day one. It feels like a prologue or a demo or an unfinished game that is continually being updated. Now, I would say that that's definitely improved since then. Maybe if you haven't played the game for, like, three months or six months, I would recommend trying it again but I would still agree with that kind of logic. I wouldn't say it's a full-on demo or a prologue, but it's not the kind of full experience that you would expect from a Gran Turismo game of old, even as recently as GT6, for instance. Now, moving back to the stuff that I do like, though, tying straight into that same point, I do like that they address the issue of having no actual career mode in the game, because it does now, and that's a great addition to have. It's something which we needed to have, of course, so having an actual career in the game is great. Again though, on that point I can go back and forth because one of the things that I don't like so much, and this is purely a personal thing but I'm sure there are those who would agree and disagree, is that the career mode doesn't feel like it has much relevance. It feels like it's in there because people were complaining about it and then it doesn't really, I don't know, progress you through the game in any relevant kind of way compared to how it used to be. You know, there's no real progression in the career mode. You just level up in a general sense, unlock new races to earn cash. But I don't know, it just feels very shallow to me. They've got some races which harken back to the past, like Stars and Stripes, that kind of stuff. But overall, it just doesn't have, the, it doesn't have the same kind of career experience for me. I'm sure there are other people who would disagree, doubtless, you can say anything and there's somebody who will disagree. But I think the career mode edition was good, but the type of career mode is still definitely nowhere near 
the most immersive or even the most relevant of the franchise. And of course that brings me to something else about the game which is very important to remember. If you like it or not, this is a big factor in whether or not you will love GT Sport or not, and that is the FIA integration and the very heavy bias and leaning towards the online aspect of the gameplay. And that's something which for me is almost irrelevant, to be fair. And I know we are in an online racing age, I know a lot of people purely play any racing game just to interact with other people and to race against them. For me, that is just not important. I've been playing GT Sport since day one, and I haven't done a single online race. I don't even have PlayStation Plus. Many of you on the Discord server already know this. People love to throw that up as uh, some kind of uh, justification as to why my opinion on the game is irrelevant. If it's an online biased game and you haven't even gone online, how can you even talk about it? To some degree, I can understand that logic, but it still doesn't really apply, because if you produce a game that's day one, an online experience, then of course you are completely justified in saying that this isn't the game for you. Assetto Corsa, for instance, I hated the game, I thought it was very under par compared to others on the market like Forza GT, Project Cars even, in terms of the all-round experience, but it's biased towards wheel use. So of course, not being a wheel user myself, I have done in the past and I've done well enough with them, but it's just not really my thing then of course I'm not the, the, the target audience in effect. Likewise, if Gran Turismo Sport was the first game in the franchise, then of course you'd be justified in saying, well, who cares what this guy thinks if he doesn't race online? The whole point of the game is racing online. But that's not been the point of Gran Turismo. That only became a part of the game in GT5. And of course GT4 had kind of online connectivity, but not really. GT5 and onward is where that really came in. But it's still not what the franchise is about. It's about racing, but it's not about online racing. That has become something that was added to the game, whereas something like Assetto Corsa, Project Cars, that's been a part of their experience from day one, from their first instalment, because they are newer games. Likewise with Forza. So it's just not the same conversation. And anyone who would say that it is, I would wager has probably not played the franchise for a long time because you would know that that's not the case otherwise. So for someone who hasn't played online at all, and the reason why is very simple, it just doesn't appeal to me. When I actually get around to paying to go online, which in itself I don't like, compared to being able to do it free in the past on PlayStation 3, now you have to pay for it for no good reason beyond just business, of course, like with any business, it just puts me off. Sure, I had fun online in GT6, but it still wasn't the thing that I enjoyed the most about the game. It was the game itself that I enjoyed. With GT Sport, it's so obviously biased toward the online aspect that that will make or break it for you. If you love that, then you will love the game. If you don't, then you probably won't. So for me, and I believe I've mentioned this before in my Candid Beards and Cars episodes about this months and months ago, my thoughts haven't changed as far as that goes. If I were not making as much content as I do for Gran Turismo Sport, I would not be playing it anywhere near as much. In fact, I would probably be in a similar position to many of you guys, and this is attested to by the fact that views on videos are dropping all the time because people are dropping away from the game all the time, and that's something which you cannot argue with, it's just a fact, the numbers tell the story there, then I would probably be one of those people who just log on, get the new car pack, buy the cars, and then start playing something else again. Because there are simply other games that give me more of what I want, which is loads of cars, loads of tuning, and racing, yes, but for a purpose. The racing is fun, it's more interesting. And I'm not just talking about Forza, I mean even previous Gran Turismo games. So, I know a lot of people are very heated on both sides of that argument, and I wouldn't necessarily disagree fundamentally with either. I can understand both parties. There are some people who genuinely don't care about collecting cars. That's fine. But my question to those people is, why did you ever play Gran Turismo before then? Because that's what it's always been about, how many sheer cars and tracks and stuff to do there is in the game. If you purely wanted racing, then why are you on Gran Turismo at all? Why not just go to the Project Cars and the AC and various other PC-based games that have been out for years, if not decades, in terms of sequels? 
So it seems a little bit contradictory to me that people suddenly act, and I will say this is, or at least it seems to be a very fanboy comment to make, that nobody cares about collecting cars, and nobody cares about how many cars are in the game. It's about the racing, it's about that experience, it's about this FIA integration and giving racing more weight in the racing community and having it as this recognised sport, which it is becoming. Yes, that's all great, but there is far more evidence supporting my side of that argument and those who agree with me than there is the other. Because the simple fact is, the reason why people are playing the game for a few days each month is because those are the days when the new cars come out. And the thing that you see in the majority of comments below every update video is not, oh, I love the online racing on this game, it's, I want this car, I want that car. Now, I don't agree with that mentality, it's completely ungrateful for the cars that we do get, but the fact remains, those people support what I just said. Their number one priority is more cars in the game, even more so than new tracks, although there are plenty of people who want new tracks first and foremost as well, that's two entire camps in their own right. So, again, I understand both sides. There are people who don't care how many cars there are. They already have more than enough for what they enjoy. But that's the same way as saying that our side of the argument doesn't matter in terms of, you know, people our side of the argument saying that that side doesn't matter. The truth is, both matter. The online is important because that's the era that we're in now, and that's the way that Kaz wanted to take this game. Maybe not the franchise, we'll have to wait and see, but at least this game... It is not GT7 after all, even though initially it said that it was, this is something different, kind of like a Horizon for Forza or even Tourist Trophy in the past. So the game is something different, and that's cool. Maybe it's just an experiment for him. Obviously he's done race driving himself, initially he planned for the Gran Turismo franchise, I mean the Gran Turismo game, I don't think he planned it as a franchise initially, to be purely for petrol heads. And then I believe it was a friend of his, one of you guys told me a while back, who encouraged him to franchise the, uh, the game more. That would make sense, because GT Sport certainly appeals more to his kind of artistic eye, where he makes the game that he wants to make, and then the kind of sales aspect comes after. Unfortunately, it also seems that the fans come after as well, which is cool. I mean, he's an artist, but you know, it's going to hurt sales, and it's all well and good selling games initially, but then when people start dropping away from it and start caring less and playing less, well, that's when you need to start thinking, well, did I make the right decision? Maybe he did. I can understand the mentality of, I'm making this, I like this, I don't care if anyone plays it. I completely understand that mentality, but it's not exactly viable for a business, and as I said, the numbers don't lie. There are less and less people playing the game. There are less and less people viewing the videos about the game. If I produce a video, for instance, about the leaked cars that are coming out this month, for instance, which I probably will in a few days or so once they get announced or released, that will get less views than that same video or that same type of video would have gotten five or six months ago because there are less people playing the game. So, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. So, for those who say that we don't care about how many cars there are, or that it's not about collecting cars, you are simply objectively wrong. The numbers show that. The comments from people constantly saying the cars that they want brought back to the game, the majority of conversations that we have are about the cars that we like the most, and the cars that we don't want in our garage, the cars that we do want. The cars that we try to earn, just look at the views that those money-earning videos make around Blue Moon Bay. Why? Because people enjoy the racing so much? No, of course not. It's a means to an end because we want to collect the cars. So I don't know where this mentality of collecting cars not being important has come from, because it's simply false. The community proves that with all the things I just said. Now, going back to the list itself, I would say that another thing that I really do like about the game is the improved physics, because although it takes you a little bit longer to get used to than previous games in the franchise, I would definitely say that the physics, they feel more authentic for the most part, the cars feel and look and act kind of how they should through corners in terms of how the suspension moves, tyre deformity, that kind of stuff, and you notice it more in older cars, classics, muscle cars, old school race cars, that kind of stuff, and of course, I said for the most part, 
you do occasionally have some bugs like the notorious uh, Hamilton Mercedes F1 car which was kind of weird for a while I'm not sure if that's been fixed completely now I haven't driven it in a while but I know a lot of people had an issue with that with the transmission in particular so of course with monthly updates they're changing that kind of stuff patching it updating it all the time and that's cool so as far as other stuff that I like this might seem to be a strange thing given all that I've just said but I'm actually going to put under the good list FIA integration I do think that that's a cool thing, and I think that ultimately it's a good thing. I just think that there's a danger of it becoming the thing. That's what I don't like the idea of, because I don't play Gran Turismo because I want to be a real race driver. And regardless of what people say now, none of those people played Gran Turismo 1 through 6 for that reason either, because you did not have the chance to become a race driver until very recently in the franchise. So that simply wasn't the case back then, it was purely for the fun in the game. So the upsides and downsides are very similar to me when it comes to the FIA, but overall I do like the integration, I like the fact that the game is becoming recognised as being realistic enough to make it an actual sport, and to infer that you have real life racing ability that can be developed by stuff like the Nismo program etc. That's all very cool for those who are interested. See, that's the thing, being objective about this as a reviewer, I can appreciate things that I don't necessarily do myself. I have zero interest in being a race driver, but I'm very happy that those who are interested in that have the opportunity to try and develop that through a game. That's really cool. I will totally agree with that, even if it doesn't appeal to me. So I will chalk that up as both a good and a bad thing, because to me it's a great addition, but the problem is with the limited scope of polyphony and the limited scope of well, actually the opposite, the huge scope of the time frame that we actually get new Gran Turismo games in. It's like every three or four years sometimes. It, you know, get your priorities straight. And if you want an entire game based around the FIA integration, as GT Sport mostly is, then that's all well and good. But don't be surprised when diehard fans who didn't come here for that stop playing. And that's what the new fans seem to miss. Like, why aren't people playing it anymore? Well, because most of us aren't here for that, and if you are, that's cool. But don't be surprised if the people around you start dropping away like flies. As far as other stuff that I like, keeping it on the, the up and up for a little bit longer, I think that two things in particular, which are kind of linked but kind of not, are really good. One has, well, it's not always, but it, it's, it's, since Gran Turismo 4 been a big part, scapes, the photo mode locations. That is most definitely the best it's ever been. The scapes locations and the photo mode, the photography in GT Sport is, I would say, completely unparalleled. There is quite simply no other racing game that's even close to how amazing the photos look. They do look real. We are at that point where it literally looks like real cars in real locations, and that's awesome. They've done a fantastic job of that. And again, tied into that, of course, you can't talk about the graphics and the photo mode without talking about the livery editor. Something that people have wanted for years, something of course that Forza beat Gran Turismo to the punch with, people love it on there. Polyphony was a, a little bit hesitant about including it, apparently for various reasons with stuff like painting hentai on cars and that kind of thing, which is kind of ironic given a lot of the cars that get upvoted and the kind of dubious material that's painted on them now. And yet Polyphony doesn't seem too bothered about taking those cars down, but there you go, a bit of a double standard there. But overall, the livery editor is very cool. Of course, it led, well, both of those things led to entire series on this channel. The photo mode competition, the livery competition, we're on week 15 of the livery competition at the time of releasing this video, like week 109, I think it is, of the photo mode competition. So well, well over a year. And it's... It's a cool aspect of the game to add. It's something that isn't entirely new in the case of Scapes in particular, but it's still a great new addition to the game because it takes it to another level. Photo mode was always a cool thing before, but now it's a great thing. It's so realistic, you can make amazing, genuine artwork in the game. 
And as far as the liveries go, well, of course, that's art, just of a different form. And people have wanted it for so long, now that we finally have it, it seems weird to not have it when you go to previous games. I mean, even Gran Turismo 6 seems primitive in comparison, where you can change colours, and then if you go back to GT5, you can do a similar thing. Go back to GT4, it seems so primitive in that way, because once you've chosen the colour, that's it. You cannot change it again after, which is... Which is uh, funny. Of course, for the time it was okay, but it seems very strange now. As far as other stuff which maybe I don't like so much, I'm just looking at the notes that I've made. A couple of them are very personal, I think, although I happen to know that a lot of you agree with this because you've made comments and messages to me about it. Stuff like the repetitiveness of prizes, the cars that you win every day. I mean, winning a car every day is a very cool idea. But that's the inherent problem with having a game with so few cars, you're going to win the same one multiple times. So I do hope that going forward they change the algorithm in some way so that you actually start to win cars that you don't already have like a dozen of. Because I know that some of you guys have really started to get annoyed winning like 7 or 8 of the same thing in a row. Which is mathematically possible, so those who doubt that, it's true, it can happen. For me personally, as I said, I've been playing it for a year. I've not once won a car worth more than a million credits. I've never won any of the 20 million classics, never won like a GT40 or anything like that. I own them all anyway, I've got like 430 cars, but it would be still cool to win something like that for a change because it's, it's just cool. And of course that brings me to another thing which I've mentioned a number of times. I even mentioned it yesterday I believe in my top 10 uh, best value for money performance cars in the game and you guys again for the most part agree with this where we don't have the same kind of progression when it comes to unlocking cars anymore it's just not a thing you know the car under the top that you can't buy you have to unlock it all that kind of stuff there are some like the nissan pace car but not many not many of note in fact and as far as oh, my overall thoughts for the game I think that there are two categories that I can boil it down to. One is from day one until now, and the second, of course, is completely open to interpretation, and that is what's going to happen from now into the future. As far as my condensed thoughts from day one until now, I would say that the game has undoubtedly gone from strength to strength. I would say it has gotten better every single month. We've had new tracks like Le Mans, Fuji, and various others. We've had new cars like Clockwork for the most part, even though we don't get told in a way that would actually help to bring people back, as I said. But we have still got new cars, I believe, every month. We may have missed one or two months, but for the most part, we have had cars. And a lot of them are returning faces, but updated ones. Some of them are new, like the Mini, for instance, and a couple of others. So there's a decent mix a lot of people would say they want more new cars. That's understandable. As I said earlier, a lot of people will always go back and forth. But uh, as far as the future, there are definitely some things which I hope will change. Some things I don't think are going to change in this game. And as far as the, uh, the inference for the future of the franchise, I think that Gran Turismo 7, if and when it does come, I think that it will be based on a lot of what makes GT Sport popular and then try to build from there. I think that the FIA integration, the online stuff, the livery, the scapes, I think that will all still be a part of GT7, but I think the career mode in particular might be considerably different, considering the backlash over that, and I think that the car selection will have to be better, because fool me once, shame on me, people aren't going to do that twice. If you offer them a game which has like 200 cars again, well they know what it's like now. Some people thought, I'll be fine with that, and now they're not even playing the game anymore. So they need to learn from this, they need to learn from the good things that have happened, from the things that everyone loves, like scapes, livery, uh, the graphics, things which pretty much everyone can agree on. And then the other things which there are a lot of people who don't agree on, like career mode. Like the amount of cars, like the amount of tracks, like the fact that we still don't even have racing brakes, which is just one aspect of all of the upgrades and tuning shallowness that this game has compared to previous ones. You can tune cars well enough, but it's nowhere near as in-depth, which again is ironic, given that Kaz's original concept was to make a game for petrol heads, so having limited tuning is kind of ironic from that perspective. You'd think there'd be more tuning especially with uh, such a, a real-world biased game. But overall, those are my thoughts. I am happy for the most part with the game. But 
there's definitely a ton of room for improvement for me, and ultimately that's all I can speak on really, my experience with the game. Do I plan to play it online? Uh, probably at some point, and I think the fact that I haven't done any online races, although certainly seems strange to some people, it puts me in a relatively unique position as far as reviewers go for putting my thoughts out there as far as the game needing to have that or not. I've played it for a year without doing a single one, so as I said, if I weren't making videos for it on YouTube, I probably wouldn't be playing it as regularly, but the fact that I am still enjoying it is a testament that it has enjoyment there. At the same time, all of the things that I said earlier do still apply. So overall, those are my thoughts. Of course, this video is going to get a ton of dislikes, a ton of back and forth comments, etc. Some people will just dislike it as soon as I mention Forza, for instance. But of course, put your thoughts down below. Doubtless, there'll be a lot of uh, conversations, a lot of arguments. And that's it overall, so this kind of became like a Beards and Cars episode, and I may touch on this kind of subject more this Saturday in Beards and Cars, but we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see until then. So of course, if you want to check out my six month reviews, like one month reviews, all that kind of stuff, to see how things have progressed, then again, check out Beards and Cars, the previous episodes in that series for that. And of course, stick around on the channel for plenty more Gran Turismo Sport content still to come. Tunes, reviews, rivals matches, news, all that kind of juicy stuff. But that's it overall. Of course, I'll see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.